Hi everyone, welcome to the Blindfold Battles. Uh, this is going to be a new thing I'm doing with uh, Danny Wrench. And I'm going to play some Blindfold games uh, against him. Uh, hopefully completely crushing him. Uh, we'll go best of uh, three games. Uh, and yeah. It's going to be interesting. Uh, I've done some practicing, of course, and I have the impression that I'm almost a good a blindfold blitz player as he is a blitz player. Just, you know, don't tell him I said that. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's try to find Danny in the game arena and get this uh, going. challenge we're, we're gonna play five two um so we have some increments uh and five minutes for the entire game and let's hope he's ready because i actually started my broadcast without telling him thinking i could get a head start and this one is uh, not going on Twitch, so it's going directly to YouTube. And since it's the first time doing it, you know, there are some first time nerves. Uh, but I think it's going to go. Well, honestly, I, I think I'm going to crush him. I think I'm going to win 3 0. And I think the next time we do this, I'm going to play blindfold and he'll just, you know, play normal. Uh, but you know, you can be overly confident. Uh, so, uh, so let's see what happens. I'm, I'm set to go, Danny. Already started. Game on. Yeah, so uh, I've been practicing uh, a little bit for this occasion. Uh, so uh, I'm hoping to, that I have a head start in that effect as well. Uh, we're going to play E4 because that's the move of Bobby Fischer. And that's the move that's going to crush this American gentleman. Mr. Wrench. Okay, so he's going for a Sicilian. Uh, that's far too complicated for me. Uh, so I'm going to go with the Bishop B5 Sicilians. I suspect that he had some idea I would do that. Now, the main options is putting something on D7. He put the Knight. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to castle. And now a6 hits the bishop. He goes knight f6, hitting my pawn. I'll go with my rook, protecting it. Also giving my bishop a square on f1. I kind of like when I get this option. Because this bishop is often running out of squares to go. Um, so I like that I get the option of putting it down here. Undeveloping it, as it were. But, you know, helping it having some kind of a purpose. Uh, let's build a center. Uh, C3 and then D4 next. I'm going to go back with my bishop. And next move, D4. And I have a good center. So that's something. If you're really attentive, you will notice that whenever I hold my mouse over a square that already has a piece on it, uh, it actually changes. So I told Danny about this and they will fix it. Uh, because that can actually be really helpful in blindfold. Uh, not that you know which piece is there, but just that there is some. Because at some point you're going to lose track of your pieces and you have an idea where your bishop is, where your rook is and and so on. And 
just knowing there's a piece on that square can give you the information that, yeah, it's probably my bishop. Uh, and, and so it's really helpful. Okay, I'm going to threaten his pawn on d6. His fianchetto is going to come back to haunt him when I put pressure on these weak pawns. If now queen c7, I can go dc5, opening also up for my queen against d6. I think he's going to have to play d5, e5. Okay. Mr. Wrench, I take your pawn. And I'm not sorry about it at all. Okay, so Mr. Wrench blundered a pawn and also his king is stuck in the center. Uh, that's not good news for him, at least. Um, I'm threatening his queen. So he's going to have to put the pawn in between. And I'm just going to take that. And I'm going to I'm going to think for a little bit. You know what? I'm going to go here. Preventing castling and also I'm really close to just opening up the center right now. And that's just going to be massive. Probably he should go knight e5, blocking uh, my. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'll develop my pieces. Yeah, now he did that, but now I think it's a move too late. Because now I'm going to take. Bishop takes. And now knight c4. Because he didn't go b5. No. And now knight c4. Hitting the bishop. And if the bishop moves. The pawn on d6 is going to go. So that's. What's Danny's expression? Ouch town. And also, there's a square on b6 I can jump to. So I'm just, you know, have so many good options. And I'm also two minutes up on time. Two minutes. This is ouch town, Danny. Ouch. Um, okay. So he has a bishop. Bishop and knight. Let's not make it too complicated. Let's take this one. And I'm a pawn up with the bishop pair and a winning position. And that should suffice. Let's put the queen on d2. I'm preventing him from castling both queen side and king side. So that's really efficient work uh, from my pieces. Probably he'll have to go knight g7. And I'm and then bishop g5, it's just oof. Yeah. It's not it's not looking good for you, Danny. That it is not. <laughs> He's gonna lose on time as well. He did not practice for this. I, I made sure to well, I don't know if it's cheating, but you know, I, you know, you you prepare. Luck favors the prepared mind. Come on, Danny, it's your turn. Oh, you're really desperate, huh? No queen exchange for you, my friend. Also hitting the pawn and also preventing castle and queenside. Multi-purpose. 
Yeah, so he's in a defensive mood, and then I'm just gonna... Any piece to any square. Any piece to any square. I'm spoiled for choice. I'm gonna go here, because I think this wins a piece, probably. Ooh, he saw that actually. Oh, but it's not looking nice. Even so. Um Okay. Well now this bishop is kind of stuck defending. Let's bring the rook in. Oh, and you're in trouble on time as well. And now this bishop. Ooh, those are some pretty good bishops. Uh, the rook, yeah, that's that's a desperate, desperate man, moving his pieces. Uh, actually, bishop d7 seems to win a queen. No, I'm gonna take that one. Ah, he's actually pre-moving in blindfold. That's uh, resourceful, at least. Um, let's give a check. No, let's not give a check. Let's, um, let's just take this pawn. Yeah. Well, there's always the chance I'll blunder the queen, um, and lose this game. Uh, but I don't think that's going to happen. C6. Um, okay, I didn't actually, I thought there was a pawn there. Um, not that it matters too much. I'll give a check here. Ouch town. And now, ah, uh, he, he resigned. Well, I'm, I'm assuming I'm going to checkmate him somehow uh, in the end. So that's 1-0, uh, uh, we're playing best of three. Uh, so game two, black pieces. I'm still hoping for 3-0. Uh, I think I can do it. Uh, we're gonna try something different? No, he's trying something strange. Um, let's develop our pieces in a normal fashion. Yeah. Actually, what he's doing is not so silly because playing normal openings in blindfold is kind of easy. Uh, whereas when he plays something unusual, uh, it, it it gets a bit trickier uh, because when there are positions you're unaccustomed to, um, you might forget where the pieces are and and so on and. Um, in a blindfold game. I think I'm doing something slightly risky because he can mount an attack with h4, h5, bishop h6 really fast. Um, so maybe I'm not a genius for playing it like this, but There's supposed to be a queen exchange somehow. Yeah, I think he realized that I have no idea what I'm doing. That's not good. Okay, but this is nice. I'm attacking the center. He's defending. His queen is kind of cut off. Maybe I can do something. No, let's just take this one. Develop our pieces to good squares. Uh, 
Uh, so he's going to castle. And I'm just... I think I'm going to try to castle queenside as well. Uh, just for the heck of it. Okay. I don't think bishop b5 was very good. I think it's just helping me develop my queenside. And I kind of decided I wanted to castle queenside anyway. Ah, but if he gets a rook on the e-file, he can get some kind of double attack on my knight on f6 and rook on h8. No, but it's fine. I'll just castle next move. Uh, and there he changed his mind. Okay, it doesn't matter. I'll do the same. So I'm slightly concerned about my two pawns here. Uh, they are a bit loose. Uh, so if I could stabilize the situation, that would be nice. Yeah, no, actually I'm quite a bit worse. He's got the open E file and he can threaten my pawn on E7. And there's no good way for me to protect that pawn because every time if I go one move forward, he can go with the queen. Dude, that was not good. Okay, so he gave away a bishop for a knight unprovoked. Uh, probably he's hoping to place his knight on e5. But I don't think that will be as effective as he had hoped. So I'm pretty, I'm, I'm happy with that trade. Yeah, because now I'm just going to go back. I'm just going to go back, defend my pawn on f7. And, um, and he's going to think, why didn't I just move my rook to the center immediately? Okay, queen back. I'm probably still worse, but it's very slight, I think. Actually, it's not that slight. Maybe we should just try to trick him. You know, when you have the opportunity to play for cheapos, you should always do that. I think that's basically Danny's philosophy to chess. So let's go for it. The next move, I'll play rook b6. Oh no, his king is on c1. Ah, uh, his king is not on b1. Okay, but he went back with the queen. And I'm going to take this opportunity to go h5. Yeah, I think going back with the queen, he, his queen was actually really annoying, creating th some threats. And now by going back, I can, I can kind of free up on my rook. Uh, and now I'll try to uh, exchange pieces just gotta figure out the best way to do so um let's go a6 i think just in case some potential forks with the knight. And he doesn't know what to do. That's always a good sign. And now I gave myself the option of moving my knight. 
Now, I'm offering an exchange. Um, but I'm not really interested in that exchange. I think if I get the opportunity, I'm just going to maneuver my knight further over to the queen side. Okay, he thought I wanted to exchange. And that's fine. He's free to feel so. And I'm free to move my pawn, which is attacked. Now, I have every single pawn on white squares, and I have a white squared bishop. Um, so I must admit, Danny has been playing quite well this game. Uh, I'm still worse, uh, but I have hopes for the future. Um, partially because I'm hoping that he'll soon <laughs> forget where the pieces are. Okay, so a3 he played. This is an interesting move. I think I'm going to take it and just, you know, hope for the best. He's going to play b4 and a4, really getting on the offensive over on the queen side. I think probably I should play rook c8 at some point, uh, just to make sure that he doesn't get too far with his pawns. Oh, I cannot play rook c8 because I have my king. That's, uh, that's interesting information. So let's move the king first. And then next up, rook c8. I'm very aware that if he plays queen c3 or queen d4, I have a rook hanging on h8. H8. Uh, that rook is actually the only piece I have that is not protected. Uh, so I'm paying extra close attention to any move that could threaten uh, that rook. And now we'll go here. We're going to have to speed up a little bit uh, because we're getting low on time. Okay, Danny. What are your intentions if I go b6? Okay, let's do this first and see how he reacts. Okay, I'm going for, I'm going for C2. I'm going for it. And he might be terrified, but actually just taking the pawn now, I cannot really take on C2 because my queen uh, gets under attack. So I'm gonna play queen C3 instead. And now my rook on uh, A8 is protected, so. Now we're going to have to play pretty, pretty fast just to make sure we don't lose on time. I'm going to get this pawn back. And then he's going to think I don't see what he's doing, but I do. Uh, and then now my bishop is actually pretty good because uh, it got on the other side of the pawn chain and uh, so it's actually a bit more effective uh, where are my pieces I have a rook here there's a pawn there um, I should open up on the king side let's go here Oh, he's trapping my bishop. Okay, he's not. He's not. He's not. Let's go back. Uh, where's my king? Where's my king? Ah, oh, my king is already here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Danny. It's a pretty blocked off position. I don't see how I'm getting 
through here and also the time is slightly stressful I say slightly it's incredibly stressful Ah, oh, my king is in check. I forgot where my king was. Ah, oh, time trouble, blindfold chess. This is not something I want to be experiencing once again. Um. I'm really happy. Uh, this doesn't happen too often. Okay, let's go here. And then I'll go here. So now you're gonna have to think about that as well. Uh, I'll go here. And now I'll go here. I'm reasonably stressed out. I don't really remember where my pawns are anymore. And I just gave him a passed pawn. Um, and I'm not liking it. That 3-0 idea is not looking too great at the moment. Um, okay, let's run. Let's run. Let's run. Yeah, well, now 3 0 is looking fantastic. Uh, let's take this one. Oh, verdammt. Um, what to do? What to do? I'm on one time. I'm panicking. I'm really panicking. Okay, I protected my pawn. That's good news. That's very good news, actually. Uh, okay, do you remember where my pawns are? Because I certainly do not. I think I'm, my bishop is protecting that pawn. So that's like the best news of the day. And now my king is coming. Uh, I'm going to take that one. Wow, that was intense. I think he's resigning. Okay, let's try a bit more. If that's a stalemate, that would be so sick. But it's not. Whew. Well, yeah, okay. Blindfold battles. Two out of two. Um, that was some sick stuff. Um, we both had just seconds left uh, for, I think, the last 30, 40 moves. Um, and, uh, yeah, well, it, it happens. It was rough. Um uh, I think I managed to trick him. I think he was winning at some point. And yeah, uh, I got this past pawn. I just ran it as fast as I could because I was blundering my pawns, forgetting where they were. And uh, he could have given a check with the knight and then stopped my pawn, I think. Uh, but he didn't see it. Uh, so, so yeah, that was blindfold chess with uh, playing on increments uh, is pretty rough pretty pretty rough uh, are we gonna do a best out of three uh, one more
Come on, Danny. I, uh, beforehand, we said best out of three, uh, but I, let's just make it a three, three L special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, I'm enjoying myself. Okay, some negotiating. I think he wasn't too happy about the result there. It was, I think it was a good game. It was a tough, hard fought game. Uh, and he has some proving to do with the white and black pieces uh, because I'm sorry to say, Danny, you were massacred in our last game. Uh, so don't do anything as silly uh, this time around. So this is kind of a beginner's trap, right? Um, but it's not as stupid as you would think. Uh, and there's actually a theory on this, um, which unfortunately I cannot remember. I know I'm supposed to give back the pawn somehow and get the bishop pair, uh, but I don't remember how. I think this is it. Yeah, because now we exchange queens, it's all looking symmetrical. Uh, except for the fact that I'm getting my knight up here, attacking on c7. And in the end, I just end up with a very pleasant looking endgame. Um, so that was today's uh, Petrov unusual openings lesson uh, a6 do you want to play b5 Danny I don't mind you playing b5 I think it's a weakening move so I'm gonna try to make you make you play it yeah okay you thought better of it uh, and then let's just develop pieces bishop out rook out Just minding our own business, getting our pieces to the best possible squares. I'm sitting with uh, the bishop pair, and also I'm sitting with a better pawn structure. So I would say on a scale from happy to unhappy, I'm really happy. I'm super excited. Okay, d5. That move, I don't understand at all because this this d pawn is kind of his weak spot and he wants his weak spot to be as far as deep into his own position as possible uh simply to make it easier to defend uh, so i think the fact that he uh went forward with that pawn um was a mistake because now it's going to be easier for me to attack that okay i'm gonna go g4 and next move i'll play f4 and then i'll go bishop f3 uh attacking uh that pawn actually the black king in the center could also be um get into trouble uh so yeah and there i think he just blundered a pawn or maybe he blundered a piece ah he blundered a piece because there's a rook on d7 so he's going to be pretty upset. And I got my 3-0 win. Uh, so there you have it. I said it beforehand. Uh, the next blindfold battles uh, might be me playing blindfold with uh, Danny uh, holding the, the, the... Actually seeing the pieces, who knows? Okay, but this was it for the very first Danny Wrench uh, Hammer Blindfold Battles. Uh, tune in uh, for the next time round.